Okay, in this video, I'm gonna walk through on how to use Ligna's base funnel system or a template system, basically a, a base template that you can create within our funnel section. That could be a website, a landing page, a full-blown website, and leverage that in a way to where it automatically builds that website upon sign up for your user. Um, use cases for that would be, you know, agent-based organizations that need to provide a dedicated local website or a dedicated site or funnel, landing page, whatever, for there are agents who are coming on board. This could be sales reps, this could be dealers, franchises, resellers, just any time that you need to offer a complete built system to make it really simple for someone to come in and make changes to it, but also want the URL automatically to be generated when they sign up. So in our system underneath controls, templates, and funnels, when you build a website here, funnel landing page, there's a couple options you can use these templates for. One, at the simplest form, you know, you're starting from an already built site. So for instance, let's say you're, you know, building websites for roofing contractors. You know, you may build four or five really good roofing templates. And every time you bring on a new customer, you want to start with that template. That way you can quickly customize the stock images, you know, the color scheme, their logo, the content. And so you're not starting from something from scratch each time. So that's one usage on our, our funnel uh, templating system that you can leverage. Another would be if you want to deploy hyperlocal websites. And so you can build out a base site, optimize it for the local markets with all your tags, and then you can click on deploy near me, and that'll generate hyperlocal websites and all those markets that you want to deploy that website from. What's also cool about the templating system or the base templates is when you make a change on that template, it'll push out to all of the child templates that are you know, being controlled uh, by that base template. The only time it won't update is if you go into that specific child site, so either at the user level or at the site level, and make a change within that content block. And so in most cases, if you're going to leverage the template system, especially for agent-based organizations or franchises, you're going to leverage our tag-based system either through the profile or at the site level. That way you're never altering, when I say they, the user who has access to that child site is never altering the design structure of your site. And so everything that you push down as far as new pages, changes, whatever it may be, will automatically get updated across the board and their changes, the child changes are left in their profile or in their site section. And so for this case, I'm going to walk through the other use case, which is I want this to actually be generated when a user signs up for my program. So when they go through the onboarding process, I want one of these sites or all of these sites to automatically be generated, uh, apply a URL for the client and make that site live for them upon sign up. And so to do that, first you have to start building out of your onboarding form. So inside user roles, you have an option here. So let me go here to user roles. You have an option of building out whatever role you may have. So if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and watch it. But over here on the right, you have a little link to where you can grab your onboarding form that's associated with that particular role, right? So you can do a lot of different things. You can set up products and billing profiles and have subscriptions and everything else, but it, just at the simplest form, you want users to come to a link, fill out their information, submit, this is gonna create their account, and now, what I'm gonna walk you through, trigger all their websites that need to be created and part of that, you need to offer some sort of field for them to put their domain in. And so the way we do that is we have a section underneath templates, data, and data fields. Here you have options of creating custom fields that will be associated with the user's profile, and you can apply it to the onboarding form. So in this case, I wanted to create a key for their site. So I went ahead, created a new data field, I named it, I selected user info, so anything selected with user info goes to the client's or the user's profile. So again, user info is tied to all the profile fields, custom fields, which you can use on the website to pull their data in. You can also use it, you know, obviously as part of the onboarding flow. And you're going to choose your type, whatever type of form field it is when they're signing up, right? And so I went ahead and created this one called Alibi Site Key. And inside here, I have an option. One, just to name some little information about what they're doing, uh, default text. And so 
at this point, what I'm trying to do is provide them the subdomain. I'm going to use subdomains for my replicated site. So I'm going to have a domain with a subdomain that's going to use that base template when it's created on, the, on demand. And so I've created this field. I've set up my groups and I have applied it to the roles that I want to have access to uh, for this particular field. And so what that ha what happens now is this field is presented on the onboarding form. And so all you have your standard account information, your standard profile, and then here I have my branded site settings, which I could probably make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And you'll have an option in here to where that site key is being presented. Now we're not done yet. Now we have to set up the workflow and we have to tag that field as the field for the domain when creating these sites. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to controls, templates, and then workflows. And if you haven't seen the videos on workflows and how to set those up, I uh, highly suggest watching that. This workflow is 100% related to create user events. So when you come over here and create a new workflow, you name it, you have a workflow type. You're going to select users and then in here you're going to select the user is created uh, event type don't worry about setting it to active yet hit create then go into your workflow and you have several options of configuring this workflow so one all the different roles that you want this to be applied to so what this means is this event is going to happen when someone signs up with your role with a link that you provided that ultimately gets them into the role that you've set up now you don't have to apply it to roles. You can do billing profiles and products. So you do have an option of selecting a billing profile and then a specific product if you want, you know, to ultimately offer uh, this workflow when someone signs up for a specific product, you know, through the sign up process. So if you haven't looked at the billing system and how that works, you can do it product based. You don't have to do it role based. In this case, I'm doing role based. So any customer that comes through the Alibi dealer role, I'm going to trigger these events. And so the events that you have are several different things. I could send out an email, an SMS, I can clone a project, set up a project task, uh, you know, all those different things, but you're going to want to select create funnel from template, uh, add action. And these are the options that you're presented with, right? So you have the base template funnel that you want to clone. So you'll see all the ones that you have access to. So you're going to select that and then domain truncate field. So this is the field as I mentioned on the onboarding flow, that user info field that I created, that we are going to leverage for the value of the subdomain. Uh, it could also be a folder, by the way, it doesn't have to be subdomain. And so that's the field that we're gonna use on our onboarding flow that's gonna relate to the value that the customer puts in when they sign up to generate their URL for the websites that we create, right? So uh, you're gonna select whatever custom field that you've set up under user info. And then you also have the default domain. So the default domain is important um, to, to note that you may have a folder-based option in addition to your subdomain, or you may just have a folder uh, option. In this case, I'm using subdomain. So what's gonna happen is when this user is created, it's gonna take this Alibi Dealer New base website, it's gonna build that out, it's gonna take the truncate field value that the customer filled out, and it's gonna take this default domain and it's gonna create a subdomain with that value and generate that site for that customer. Now, the other funnels we have are associated with different domains. So not only is it subdomain, but it's also a folder base for this. So Cloud VS is associated with this Cloud VS website, right? And so we're still gonna use the site key and we're still gonna use the subdomain, but you can see I put my base default domain with the folder Cloud VS. And so I did the same thing here uh, for the DMC base and then also the uh, carbon dealer, right? And so this is preventing, or this is creating all four of these websites when this dealer signs up. Now you can have, again, emails that go out that leverages that same domain field to generate in the email their links automatically, you know, welcome information, even create a project or whatever you may be. But for this, you know, we're simply setting up that these four funnels will be created when this dealer signs up. The last step, so you're going to save everything, you're going to make it active, and so now it's active. And so when I go through, and actually I'm going to open up in my other side over here, so I can show you the whole flow and how it all gets set up. So I'm going to go out to my onboarding form, and I'm just going to type in demo123 at demo.com. 
and awesome, I'll put a little real quick. Um, test. And press button. Again, you can have as many questions as you like on this onboarding form. So in this case, we're also collecting what categories they want to offer within here. So there's a lot of other things that are being provided. And then here's this truncate field, right? So in this case, I'm just going to put demo 888999. And so when I hit submit here, this is automatically creating my account. This is sending any notifications and login credentials. You can put whatever kind of message you want here for the customer. You can redirect it to a whole nother section or the login. And so now this user is created. And in my other screen here, I'm going to go ahead and get into this user account. And so what's going to happen is this cron this this automation this workflow is right now seeing that this new user signed up for this new alibi dealer role and that we have to build uh, four websites for this customer we need to use that field the truncate field uh, to actually generate their sites for them and so let me go into the site this account and, and you'll see here that all four sites were created if I were to go into the base site settings or the child site settings, you'll see all my information is provided, my branding. And so now I can go ahead and take my URL and go out there and you'll see that this site was generated automatically for me using all my information in my profile, everything that I filled out. And so now I have a full blown site with my URL already built and ready to go. Now, of course I could go into the site settings if you, set up the rules to allow the child user to go in and, and update their domain and leverage a custom domain and not use the subdomain. But this is super helpful for, you know, quickly getting someone a dedicated website, right? If I fill out this form, if I do anything on this site and fill this out, let's do a different email here. I don't want to get my demos here blocked. So I actually have to use a regular email and then, right? So this site's already set up and ready to go for me. And when I come into my lead section, you know, within my platform, I'm already having access to my, I already got my notification on my lead. So I have my new lead here. It's associated with this account and then also have you know, again, my profile and everything that I have associated with this particular user is already ready to go. My site's live. I can use my link on social media or whatever I need to do. So again, there's, there's tons of different usage or use cases that you can leverage with this. At the root of it, you know, there's an onboarding process and you need to generate sites for your clients or for your, you know, team members or sales reps or franchises. And when they sign up, it automatically creates a site, applies their own personalized URL, generates the sites, gives them access to the back end. And so they're basically already onboarded. And if you're leveraging our cadence system or workflows associated with those data forms, you know, those are already applied and set up. So you can literally have the entire system ready to go upon sign up, not only the back end, but also giving them the ability to have their own website funnel, landing page, multiple sites in this case that, you know, this customer or this demo, I, you know, I've set up four sites through it. So yeah, um, that's the walkthrough. It's, it's pretty easy. I mean, obviously first you got to build out your base template and your base funnel and site, and you got to apply the role to that site. And then once you apply that role to that site, then you would, you know, now be able to leverage, you know, this workflow, but you know, it's pretty powerful stuff. So I appreciate y'all today and uh, let me know if you have any questions.